John Dixon and Sons are much better known for their round action side by side. But since 2010, they have made a very small handful of over and unders. And I've got two of them in front of me. Let's have a look. So this particular pair of guns is actually the first pair they ever made. They were ordered in 2006 and completed in 2010. You know, Dixon's going to have a bit of waiting time anyway, but that is an interesting sort of build time in terms of how long it took them to develop and come up with the concept. And a beautiful concept it is, because they've paid homage to the side by side. They've not gone out and started to make something else, it is a rounded bar over and under with really nice touches. And, and we'll look through some of those in a sec. But if you're a fan of their side-by-sides, there is enough on here to turn you on. Let's start at the back. I don't know which one to pick. This one. Let's look at this one. Start at the back and work our way forward. So the stocks are all wood stocks with a checkered butt. They've got a very open Woodward style grip with that flat pommel there. They've got a horn grip cap, which is actually a lovely touch and obviously a little electric blue screw in there. Gold ovals, and that sort of classic Dixon coarse practical checkering. You can have a look on the bottom. There's obviously a trigger plate gun because it's a Dixon and it's an over and under. And well, it's an over and under, most over and unders are trigger plate guns. The trigger guard actually is inlet down into the trigger plate, much like one of their side by sides. I do think it's one of the most attractive things on this gun just how that's put together. It's a single selective trigger, or they are single selective triggers. There's just a push through rod at the back. I understand there's certain markets in the world that love selective triggers, but I do think the gun would have been a bit cleaner without the selector. But hey, uh, if the buyer wants, the buyer gets, right? What the customer wants, the customer gets. This is where we start to get a little flavor of the engraving. It's absolutely beautifully engraved. Engraved by Derek Pegnell very, very, very nicely. It's a large acanthus scroll that covers pretty much every corner of this gun. And if we marry up the forend to it, the engraving is continued into the forend. It's a lovely, lovely thing. Look at this safety tang here as well. There's a real Dixon line to the way this has this beautiful waist to it almost. It's just a nice thing. Safety catch with golden lead safe, and the safety catch as well is beautifully filed up. It's just a nice piece of metal. Inside the action, it's starting to get fairly interesting. It's not fairly interesting. It's curious that if you look inside the action, you have these two little raised metal areas that sort of bolster the barrels in, but they're not actually part of the action. They have been added to it with a little pin, I presume, that holds it in place. I know that that shouldn't fascinate me, but it, it does. <laughs> there was a clear choice that they wanted that to be removable or interchangeable or something, as opposed to machining it with the action bar. I suppose it's just interesting. It's a very classy gun. I'm just enjoying looking at it, to be fair. It is a very beautiful thing. It's locked up, or it, it pivots on two trunnions and locks up on a little split pin that comes in into these two segments here. The ejectors are fired from the forend with two big V-springs to power and drive those. It's a nice thing. The forend is uh, American rounded style, or English rounded style, a rounded style, and you have this slight curve of the forend iron that kind of lends itself to the general shapes of the gun. Barrels are 29 and a half inch, nitro proof but not steel, I say, the barrels were proved in 2008. It's, uh, say, ordered in 2006, barrels proved in 2008, gun finished and delivered in 2010. It gives you some context of how long it takes to build one of these, bit by bit. I always love this as a touch, when the metal is raised to seamlessly bond the wood to the barrels. These are lot 1361 in the Holtz March 2022 auction. They're valued at 30 to 50 grand. I suppose, depending on how you look at it, that represents fairly good value. You know, there are less than 10 of these ever built. 
and I expect if you went to Dixon's and asked them to build you a pair, you're probably at a fair lot more than thirty to 50,000. Plus, it's a four-year wait. The stock dimensions are quite sensible too, which is nice. And really, if you don't like the guns, let me show you the case. In case you hadn't realized, we are actually here today at Holtz Auctioneers. They are one of the biggest gun auction houses in the world, specializing in shotguns and rifles, both antique and modern sporting arms. Go and check their website out. Even if you're not interested in buying a gun from them, go and check their website out. You will learn so much and the opportunity to see guns you didn't know existed is amazing. There's a link in the description. Luggage is always a bit curious, isn't it? I, I like it. It does something to me when a gun has a nice case like this. The feel of quality leather and proper craftsmanship just bonds a pair of guns like this together. That is special, it's part of it. This is actually, before we talk about that, something that deserves a note or is of note. The 4N9 is a beautiful shape. It really is lovely and the way that the checkering goes around it is just well done, extremely well done. Sorry, the case, it's a, it's a John Dixon case with all of the bits. Putting a gun into a well-fitted case is just a wonderful thing to do. I should probably drop that top lever down as well whilst we're at it. You have snap caps, you have turn screws, you have an oil and grease pot, like you have everything you could want. It's just classy to have nice luggage, it really is. Especially a pair of over and unders. So you, you see lots of side by sides in cases, but the world of over and unders, everyone seems to be very, you know, you can buy yourself a 10 grand Beretta and they give you a plastic case. <laughs> Seems a bit boring, doesn't it? These are lovely. You shouldn't expect any less when you buy a pair of handmade guns. You know, they are interesting. The opportunity to own British over and unders is pretty rare. Not that many have been built over the last hundred odd years. So that in itself is special. The fact that they're modern and, and the stocks and the shapes and the proof and everything is modern as well is quite a treat too. And it's just doubly nice that they are absolutely stunning. By the way, we are very unlikely and certainly I am very unlikely to ever see another one of these. It's been a proper treat. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Take care. And uh, as always, thanks to Holtz for having us. <laughs>